Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm just now waking up. Sorry. I'm just now waking up, so um, I'm pretty shocked by what I've seen in my comments uh, on the video where I was warning about what the Lord gave me to warn you about. So, um, I'm feeling led that I need to do a little lesson so you can see that I'm not turning to man, that I am obeying scripturally what I am to do whenever I'm in a situation like that. So, first of all, we're going to start in 1 Timothy. I want you to understand God put pastors over us for a reason. There is a reason that we are to have a pastor over us. Okay. So, in 1 Timothy 1.3, you find out that a pastor has to guard the right doctrine. Remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine. This is scripture that pastors read and understand what their job as a pastor is to do. A pastor should show love and should build up the love of in the lives of the church members the aim of the the aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith first timothy 1 5. a pastor should pray a lot first of all then i urge that supplications prayers intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people first timothy 2 1. A pastor should organize the church. A pastor should train himself in godliness. A pastor should read the Bible for the church to hear. Apply the Bible to the uh, apply the Bible text to the lives of the hearers and explain what the text means. Devote yourself to the public reading of scripture to exhortation to teaching. A pastor should take care of the church members helping them in their spiritual lives, but also help them with practical life issues they are facing. 1 Timothy 5. A pastor should maintain church discipline. As for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that they, the rest may stand in fear. 1 Timothy 5.20. As you see, it's scriptural. While Paul clearly states that those who lead the church spiritually should be supported by the church, this does not mean that all pastors should be full-time employed in church work. In many cases, teaching elders, shepherd teachers, or pastors, whatever term you use, will have a job on the side to make their own living, but are also partly supported by the church in gratitude for the spiritual blessings they receive. For the church, it is important to display understanding that the laborers deserve his wages. That's your pastor. For the pastor, it is important to show church members that he is more interested in spiritual blessings than in material blessings. And that it is true in his own life what Paul wrote to Timothy. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. 1 Timothy 6, 8. Okay, now, for everyone who said I was trusting in man, which I didn't understand that whenever I heard it, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to read you some scriptures. In Ephesians 4, 11, it says, and he gave himself some he and he gave some he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of christ till we all come into unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ it says right there that God is the one that gave us pastors. So why are we against pastors? I don't, I don't understand that. Okay. And then in Hebrews 10, we're going to go to 
10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And this is in Hebrews 10, 25. All right. <clears throat> About the laying on of hands, which is what I was calling my pastor for. Um, James 5, uh, 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So as you see, God is the one that put the pastors over us. The pastors, my pastor prays and fasts and he's constantly on his face before God for his flock. This is why I turned to him in the dream. Some of you understood what I meant by that because you understand the purpose of a pastor. Some of you did not understand what I meant by that and thought that I was um, putting my trust in man when I was obeying the scriptures. In my dream, I was obeying the scriptures and I was turning to my pastor. I pray that this clarified some of what my dream was last night. But there's a warning in there that everybody really needs to hear and not pay so much attention to the fact that I was trying to search my phone for my pastor's phone number because I turn to my pastor whenever I need prayer over certain things because where two or more are gathered there, I am in the midst of them. And he is the pastor. He is the one, the shepherd that God put over us. I love y'all. I pray this gave you some clarification.